This year we will discuss in a workshop series uh, the question of changing energy flows uh, in the world uh, of today and the future. We are absolutely committed to continue on with these uh, issues and also would like to welcome and thank the Institute for Strategic Dialogue for joining uh, this effort. From our point of view, being a political foundation, these which seems to be such technical discussions about energy supply, energy demand, have an enormous political implication and uh, would just uh, point out that what is going on in these days and weeks in Ukraine, when we thought about the countries and the issues we should talk about this year, I think we, we weren't seeing or, or foreseeing what is now on the table and it, which has, of course, also a, an, an, uh, an, an energy component, but is uh, most of all a very sensible and significant political dimension which will have enormous impacts on energy supply for the next years. It's clear that the emergence of uh, East Mediterranean gas was a game changer uh, for many in, in the region, uh, not the least uh, for Israel economically, conceptually, this is, uh, this is a, a, a real uh, fundamental and important uh, change. The uh, economic repercussions are, are clear and may be discussed uh, later, this is not my area. But the question is, is there something beyond the obvious uh, economic repercussions that we should uh, be looking at? One is that I think this region is also somehow uh, having unrealistic expectations about the uh, importance and magnitude of ISMED uh, resources. I think we have to have a foot down approach in this regard. And nobody argues that uh, the region uh, contains enormous amount of reserves. Leviathan and Aphrodite, they are a geopolitical game changer for the East Mediterranean region. Next one, please. So what are the policy priorities for Turkey? First of all, Turkey should aim the development of the Southern Gas Corridor and demonstrating to the European Union and to the West that is a reliable transit country. So just to underline here, when Europe is trying, in fact, to diversify away from dependency of Russia, we cannot underline that Turkey is, is moving closer to relations with, uh, with um, Russia and getting more dependent on Russia. You could add an existing 5 or 6 PCM from Shakhtanese phase one. That would remarkably improve the economics of Tana, which are very, very poor. So all of these things are interconnected, and maybe that's the really big thing we have to bear in mind. If we don't look at them in an interconnected fashion, we're likely to see what is happening <coughs> being repeated all over again, bilateral agreements with Russia, dependence on Russia, I will say uh, the summarizing uh, uh, bottom line, and that is that economic interest alone uh, is probably insufficient uh, to overcome uh, political conflicts. Uh, but since the political conflicts we have uh, touched upon are in a positive dynamics, even if it's a modest one, it may be used as a catalyst. And in some cases, economic interest may be sufficient in order to at least overlook if not resolve political barriers. And that is, for example, why uh, there is such a great volume of trade between Israel and Palestine, for example, and why it's not unusual to hear Hebrew spoken in the Gulf states. I thank everybody of you here in the panel, and especially in the audience this time, because uh, to have 11 speakers here is for an audience uh, quite a task. But this was possible because of enormous time discipline.